Mercado Vial TV, un mundo de máquinas. Bueno, seguimos acá en Conexpo 2023 en el stand de Bobcat, obviamente con muchísimas novedades pero hoy nos vamos a detener en lo que es la línea de equipos eléctricos que está presentando. Ya estuvimos viendo el, el prototipo Rock X. Esto está más cerca de la realidad. Ya habíamos visto en Bauma el T7X, que, que es sobre orugas. Y hoy están presentando como novedad acá la nueva mini cargadora sobre ruedas eléctricas S7X. Y acá estamos con Denis, que es el especialista en este tipo de equipos eléctricos, que nos va a comentar de qué se trata y cuáles son las diferencias con la de orugas. Denis, Again, how are you? Doing very well. The show, the show is so well attended. We just, uh, we just love to see everybody out. All right. Uh, we already see the prototype, the Rock X, incredible. We already see the T7X in Bauma, and now you are presenting this. That's a, a real skid steer with with wheels. What are the differences? What are the, you know, the advantages regarding a uh, runtime, etc. Yeah, so uh, you, you really hit it on the head is that, that that T7X was our, that was our first our first foray into into the full electric where we don't have the diesel, we don't have the hydraulic fluid. Uh, the, the S7X is very similar. So it's a very similar setup, same battery, same actuation. But the biggest difference is that it has the wheels rather than the tracks. And we we came up with the putting the wheels on to, to uh, address some of the runtime thoughts. So a lot of people thought that Well, the runtime isn't quite long enough with that track track unit. Well, a way that we can address that very easily is to actually just put wheels on because turning wheels is so much easier than turning tracks. So we go from about a four to five hour run continuous runtime on the T7X to about an eight to nine hour continuous run. Really, that's, okay. that's almost double. Yes, yes. So it it really does make a big difference when you're not having to turn those turn those tracks. Right. Uh, the second question regarding runtime. What about attachments? People may say, well, I have, I have my, my skid steer, it's diesel. You can't use those same attachments on, on this machine, of course, because this is electrical, but what are the solutions that Bobcat are thinking for the future in that, in that regard? Yeah, so, so if you have your non-powered attachments, uh, everything will fit on here. It's, it's our standard bob attached. so if you have your buckets, your pallet forks, those things that don't require power, those will fit and they'll work very well on here. If you have your powered attachments, that's where we are developing the electric attachments. So uh, we have an electric, uh, we're electrifying, uh, we have an angle broom at the, at the show here, we have an electric grapple, and we have multiple more in, in, uh, in that we're, are in the works of actually electrifying them. Uh, we have a snowblower that's a snowblower. Don't forget the snowboard. Yes, yes, absolutely. Especially in, uh, in North Dakota this, this winter, we've had a lot of snow. So we've had a lot of good opportunity to not only use that snowblower, but to use it in very cold conditions. Because that's another, another uh, thing that people really worry about. Well, you have this electric vehicle. How is it going to, how is it going to operate in these very cold conditions? And, and they operate fantastic. Well, we came to the back of the of the machine just to see what's in here when there was a diesel engine. Now we have these kind of things that you were going to explain. I thought it was the batteries here, but I don't know. Just explain what what we have here. Yeah, that's correct. When you open the tailgates, you know, on, on a typical machine, you're going to see the engine is going to be right here. So with that removed, that's where our battery sits. So our battery is this uh, just large box that is in the bottom right here. Uh, that's that 60 kilowatt hour battery. And then above that, we have our battery management system and our drivers. So those are the things that are going to take that power from the battery, deliver it out when it's called for out to either an actuator or a drive motor. When we were in Baltimore, he said that the other guy pointing, you have uh, liquids here besides the ref refrigeration water over there, right? Yes, yeah, so we have some glycol. So we have some glycol loops for some cooling loops. So that's these purple purple hoses. And that's actually the only liquid in the machine is just that glycol. So just to remember again is and to finish, battery runtime in this is eight, almost eight. What about charging this? Yes, charging time is about 10 hours from having that battery as, as far as you can take it down to a full charge is about 10 hours on a 240 volt circuit can plug it in the in the wall besides we just see the the little door over there you have you have to plug 
over there, right? Yes, yes, it's a type two charger. It's onboard charging. So that type two charger, you just plug it into the wall and then you put the other end into the, the type two receptacle and that will charge up. So it'll charge up in say, say 10 hours. So the thought is that people use it during the day and they charge it overnight. Now just to finish service, I'm again, uh, you don't have hydraulics, you don't have leaks here. Yeah, so you don't, you're not going to have leaks, uh, but you're gonna, you've, you've got very good access to these things. So the drivers, the battery management system, even the battery itself are extremely, extremely easy to get to. Uh, even the actuation and the drive motors on here, there's a, they're very easy to get to, very easy to unplug, take out, if there should be ever any issue with them. You can tilt the cabin, right, to access to other engine, uh, electrical motors? Yes, yeah, so you can tilt the cab up, just like on our, our current units, so you can get to the front side and the back side of this. And under that cab, there's there's really nothing. So there's uh, there's a lot of, it almost looks like it's missing parts because there's so few parts on these fully electrics as opposed to the diesel hydraulic versions. So one thing I one thing I wanted to mention is that these machines are, they have heaters and air conditioners in them. So a lot of people kind of question is that, well, will I get air conditioning with this full electric? And yes, so this is our air conditioning system. It's just instead of run, instead of running it off a pulley off an engine, you're just running it with an electric motor to compress that refrigerant. So that's our, our uh, air conditioning so that you can be nice and cool in the cab. When you get into the cab, you're not gonna know the difference of, of from a diesel hydraulic to a, a full electric. So the creature comforts and the feel of that cab are all the same. Joystick or the other Bobcat. Uh, yeah. Correct, so these are only joystick runs. So these are just the SJC controls that we have in our, in our diesel hydraulics. So the same, the same control patterns, the same joysticks, yes. Thank you for the interview and congratulations for the for the presentation of this new product. I remember I didn't ask you about availability. If this this is going to be in the markets. When are you thinking? Yeah. So the T7X is is in production right now, and that is that is being produced in production. The S7X, the wheeled version, is going to be available. That's going to be released in 2024. And the the Rogue X, we don't have we don't have. We will know. Yes. We'll see. Okay. Thank you. Thank you again. Absolutely. Thank you.